Welcome to the fourth episode of Just Vibing. Amarna Sarkar here with Ellis Gordon. Uh, I know I'm from you know WRCU. Um, we we both did um you know Friday Crew like last spring semester actually. Um, I think we've also been on some other crews besides that. Um, you know um he actually you know he did um he was on the my first uh, ever um women's and men's basketball call um which I thought was really interesting to have that happen for a second time like a lot later right but it was it was a good experience you know I felt like I felt really comfortable you know like kind of having someone who had like kind of been there you know been there um before um to kind of guide me through that process and hopefully next year I, I guess when I you know hopefully have a bigger role in terms of you know football and basketball and stuff like you know um I can kind of build on on that on that kind of stuff. Um, you know, yeah. obviously, yeah. I mean, I had the Ohio State football call, but you know, we'll see about next year. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's how we kind of you know know um, each other. Also, like I, you know, I know you're um, you know, you kind of passed on the torch in, in the Targum onto you know Josh. Um, and I think Matt and Camden are also running that. So I thought that was you know um, that's pretty interesting too. Um, I guess yeah. I mean, I guess to start off, like you know. Um, you know, obviously, you know, WRC, it's like, it's a lot of fun, you know, a lot of friends and we all, we all pretty much, we all get along. We, you know, maybe some people we, we might be a little bit closer to, but I feel like everyone's, we, we're, we're all pretty good friends. Um, obviously that Friday crew with, you know, with you guys, with you and Josh and, um, and Max and Jess, you know, that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, had a really good time. I mean, some of the beefs were kind of intense, but they're, they're fun. They're, they're lighthearted. You know what I mean? Like, nah, they're, not um, that intense. They're, they're always, nah, they're, 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 they're casual. They're, they're pretty, they're pretty funny, honestly. Like, I feel like I exaggerated my part a little bit just to kind of, you know, for the air, but, um, but yeah, no, it was a good time. Um, other than that, I mean, obviously those calls that I mentioned, you know, those were really fun. Um, you know, I feel like I'm still kind of coming up in the in the process, but I mean, you know, I guess I kind of wanted to ask you like same, you know, same question. Like, what are you know, you've you've kind of um done a lot of stuff with WRCU and in terms of calls and and crew and, and you know productions like the whole nine yards. But like, what are like what's been your favorite part or favorite parts of WRCU? And maybe if you have like, you know, a top moment of it or or something like that, a top call. Like, you know, if you could like just go into some detail on that. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, top call and favorite moment are very different. Top call is weirdly the Rocker Stonehill game, which sucks. Oh, yeah. 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 But it's my only game winner I've ever called. So that has to be my top call, even though the game itself sucked. Um, right. My top moment are always the basketball games, which I don't know how much you want to get into. But, but like, because I just like playing basketball, I like hanging out with friends. Or, like, the meetings are always fun. Meetings are a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely in the upper echelon of moments, but I think my top moment is the basketball games. But my top call, like the basketball the games, games we play, like yeah, we like play, we play. Games. Gotcha. yeah, those yeah. are a lot of fun too. Yeah, because mm -hmm. because yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't even though my best call, it was my best call, and as a game winner, I wasn't like, I wasn't excited about the game. I was very nervous, so I wouldn't say that's my best call, but yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I was actually, I was, I was watching that game, you know, um, end up watching a lot of them from home. Cause it's kind of like, even if you're not the most into it, you get into it by just by being at the radio station. Cause it's like, you always have to know what's going on with the team. So yep. you end up yep. following it pretty intensely. Um, yeah. I mean, I was never really the biggest college sports fan, but I really have become um a pretty big college sports fan um i'm really 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 into college football I'm I'm, i don't think i'm that much into college basketball at that point but i do enjoy march madness and um we'll obviously get into that how can you not? huh how can you not exactly exactly how can you not how can we not get into march madness yeah college basketball is a lot of fun um and that's pretty cool actually about the Stonehill game though. I mean, that was I didn't even know if we were gonna win. I mean, like, you know, it came down to that last second Simpson um, you know, three pointer and kind of getting, you know, the stops that Rutgers did. I mean, that game did really feel like the whole season was kinda of in the balance. Um, because I mean, you know, if they lost that would have been a terrible like, you know, it would have been a quad four loss, it basically would have eliminated them. I mean, obviously they didn't end up making it to any postseason contention but um you know that would have eliminated them before they even got to the conference late you know so that would have that would have really sucked but i mean i'm glad they they pulled through and it, it, i'm sure it did make for an exciting call with you and i think you and eddie were you were on that one and you know like it, it was it's intense when you don't know who's gonna win and the game goes back and forth and obviously you know you'd want that with a more like 
with with a Big Ten opponent. But um, you know, and Rutgers has had their share of upsets themselves against like Purdue and stuff like that. But at the same time, like an exciting game is an exciting game, and definitely made for I'm sure an exciting call. I mean, I was watching it on TV. That was certainly certainly a lot of fun. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's I guess that's kind of how WRC's going for for the both of us um you know in terms of like um you know you i guess like you know your your time at the targum and stuff like you know a little bit of a different experience i'm sure it's similar in some ways different in, in others but i mean like you know i know like a lot of um, my friends at, at wrc and our friends like they do both and you know i'm sure it's a it's a good experience i obviously you know you're the head sports editor for past year and you know mm -hmm. you, you kind of passed on the torch to to josh who you know i already mentioned from you know friday crew and all of that and you know um but i mean you know i know him well i know matt um he's been a great friend of mine yeah they're great matt, yeah. Mm -hmm. matt josh and camden you yeah. know it's sad i'm no longer there because i love being there right but they're doing a great job like i'm not they're in control, so it's great. And yeah, yeah. It's hard. both Targum and WSU are great. And if you're coming in Rocker Student and listening to this, I and you like sports media, obviously. Or yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Is any any writing in newspaper and media, right. Right, right. I highly recommend you join. It's a it's both oh, yeah. are good times. And mm -hmm. you can do more in sports if you're into it. But I, I'm into sports, but you can right. do more. Kind of similar with WRC because you know some people do like you know you could do news you could do music um you know whatever you're interested in um obviously you know like I'm in the you know we're all in the in the sports department we're all in the sports and you know calling games or some form of whatever you you know you want to end up doing there but I mean like but yeah I mean same thing I guess you, there's a bunch of different things you could do um I feel like the experience is really good in terms of sports you know like talking about it and really being on the air and calling games that's a cool experience you get to go on trips haven't really got to do that yet but I'm, I'm assuming hopefully next year that kind of works out for me but um you know have you ever been I mean well, obviously you've been on trips is there like a favorite trip of yours that you you did with like WRSU favorite trip um behind mm, well favorite call my favorite trip is different but my favorite trip is the Bahamas because sorry about that my favorite trip is the Bahamas because it's the Bahamas. You got to love the Bahamas. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I, that's I got four days in the Bahamas. You can't beat it. So, yeah, that, that'd be my favorite trip. Gotcha. Um, yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, in terms of, like, you know, the Targum, I guess, like, you know, like, kind of, like, what was your experience like there? And, um, you know, I guess, how do you feel as you, you know, you kind of, like, you, you pass on the torch now and you kind of, you kind of move on, I guess. But, like, you know, what was kind of, like, your experience, like, you know, how, I guess, like, how is it similar and how is it, like, different than, like, WRSU? Well, it's completely different than WRSU because it's a newspaper. But right, right. in terms of my passing on the torch, my experience, I mean, I'm sad passing on the torch because I loved it and I got money from it. But I'm also, like, as I said before, Josh, <laughs> Camden, and Matthew are more than capable of doing, you know, doing the work, so... I'm not worried about it, but it's a little sad because um, I love covering the basketball team. But um, but my overall experience was great. I started off as a softball beat writer during COVID, worked my way up to become a sports editor, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of good moments, a lot of bad, but that 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 that's life. So that that was yeah, that's, you know, in a work environment, that's great. It's a lot. WRC is a lot. It's a lot more clubby. Where Targum is a lot more work, but Targum is really you. fun work. So I, I, I always loved my work. So even during the bad moments, I had fun. So I loved it. But you got to like that stuff. Um, yeah. I, I love doing it. I, I, that's what I'm good at. So it was it was, it was was fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I noticed like over the months, you know, you had a lot of double. Like I think you, you called it like a double feature or something like where you had like a call for WRCU and then you had a recap. Yeah, yeah. Because I was getting some of my final calls for WRCU. Um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like I, I, I do do a couple of those. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's always cool. I, it's like kind of a different vibe, I guess, if you're more oriented like that. Because, like, I guess as a play-by-play -play guy, like I'm never, uh, or you know, someone that hasn't really had that much of an interest in sports writing, like for a career, I've never really been interested in like the press conferences. Like they're cool and they're fun, and I've I have to kind of open myself up to obviously talking to them and kind of breaking out of that. You know, obviously, like you know, first time's the hardest, but like you know, it's like for you guys, you have to you know like write those recaps, and you know, you have to get. So, I mean, it's a little different because, like, when I did the football call with Dylan and Eddie, we kind of didn't, I don't, like, I don't even know if you have to even go to them if you don't, like, you know, write anything because, like, we just didn't even bother. So, I mean, it's kind no, of like yeah, a different it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, 
it's definitely different as a, you know, right now, Wag, speaking of NC tournament, right now, Wagner's only up three with 40 seconds left on Howard. Oh, wow. Um, that, I was trying to get, I did, this podcast. but anyway, um, no, it, it's very different. Like it, it's very different experience. As you said, like, for example, a big thing is like, I go to the press conferences. Like I, I have a deadline after every press conference. So like, I'm a little more stressed out. Like, that I see you're like making the boards. Like it's a lot of pre prep. Yeah, a lot of pre prep. A lot of post prep. But that's what makes yeah. it fun. But like, yeah, it's very different in terms of like, yeah, it's very different. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely feel that. Um, yeah, definitely quite a different experience. Um, um, yeah, doing Targum versus RSU. But I mean, now if you do both, definitely good experience. I don't know. I never quite found my way to where it's that. But I mean, I do an internship where I, I, I you know, do sports writing. Um, what's your, what's your internship again? Uh, it's called Sports Radio America. Um, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, you've heard of them. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a little more. You? Sorry. What, what? What do you say? How's that going for you? Um. Pretty good. It's kind of like a little bit. It's it's more on my own pace, so I feel less stressed. It's kind of like whenever you want to, but um, <clears throat> I'm supposed to be like the Big Ten, like Rutgers writer, I guess. Like, so I'm supposed to write a lot of college pieces and you know yeah. stuff like Rutgers. I, I wrote a bit a bit about Rutgers football. Like basketball's kind of been. How many articles did you write per week? Um, it was supposed to be two, and in the summer I try to at least make it one. Now it's kind of like it's more relaxed. It's kind of like whenever I get the chance, but um, I'm trying to pick up on it. I'm actually um. I'm writing a piece for March Madness. I'm gonna pro- pro- um, excuse me, probably try to finish that one by tomorrow so I can get it posted quickly. Um, exactly. on like some of the upsets like that I think will happen the first round. So um, yeah, you gotta get it out so- quickly if you're gonna do it. Yeah, exactly. I already started working on it, so I mean, you know, hopefully. Is that- there a Sports Radio yeah. America radio show? Uh, I think they have they have radio too. Um, they it's like a. Yeah, I think there's two sides. They have a radio side of it, which I kind of also wanted to be a part of because I'm more like radio oriented. And I think they have some play by play stuff, but they also have, they, um, you know, they have the writing side, which I, you know, I actually just applied on Handshake and kind of when I was making the whole switch to journalism, kind of was like, you know, maybe I should try to do something an internship related to journalism and trying to like get myself, you know, a little bit ahead. And it's kind of also part of the reason I started the podcast too. But I also just, I, I just really enjoy the podcast. You know, we do weekly episodes, but I mean, yeah, so there's a writing side, there's a radio side to sports radio. Um, I've been trying to get into the radio side. I'm not really sure if that's that's gonna work out, but um, I do like the writing side. I mean, I kind of like having it separate in a way because it's like you know, I, I I'm I guess you know I'm kind of busy with the radio stuff, and that's kind of what I want to make a focus out of. But at the same time, like I think it's important to be you know, especially in a career like this, to be, like, well-oriented and do different things, you know, like, develop your skill set, what's, try to do... What, what's your ultimate goal, different. radio? Yeah, or, or um, really TV, I guess, like, play-by-play, yeah, play or sports industry. talk, you know what I mean? Like, something like that. Like CNA? Um, yeah, I mean, it would be fun to be, like, something like that, or, yeah, you know, like first take a bunch of random things, yeah. That's... Yeah, I, I guess, or maybe, like, NBA or NFL Live, something like I don't know. Nah, I mean, I don't know. It, it's kind of whatever, like, you know, sports center. I, I don't know, whatever. I think my main, my number one thing would probably be play by play, whether that's, like, you know, football or basketball. Um, I think number two behind that would be sports talk. Um, TV, I guess, ideally, because, you know, that's a bit more popular in radio, but, well, you know, there's a lot of options. I'll say that. That's true. It opens up a lot of doors because then you, you can always do the play by play for the radio. You could, you could figure out different things you want to do at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, writing was never really a thing I considered going into. At the same time, like, I do feel like I do have somewhat what a skill set on that. And, you know, I guess I, even though, yeah, I've kind of opened up a little bit. It's, but good, I, it's good to sharpen your skills in every facet, especially exactly. in the world where people want multiple, people, people want skill, multiple skilled people. Yeah, definitely. Especially in, yeah, exactly. In, in, in sports, you know, like to break into a tough industry, you know, you gotta, it's better to have that skill set if you could do, you know, different things. Like if you could do, yeah, like, you know, the radio and you could produce and you can call games and you can write, you know, like it, yeah, it definitely opens up opportunities. So if you can't get in one way, you can get in another way. And I feel like, you know, um, I mean, I've kind of opened up a little bit, but I, I mean, you know, sometimes I can express things in writing that I, I can't really express in words. And I like, like to write better. You know, personally, you like to write better. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. But you, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, uh, it kind of works with my personality, but like at the same time, I kind of, I want to kind of, you know, the main things, the speaking, but the internship's been good for me. I feel like I've learned a lot from writing. I kind of realize it's like, you have to learn 
how to write to make the other people like the readers interested and like sometimes like what you might think is the most interesting might not be the most interesting so when I started I was like you know I, I was like thinking I could just write like a 32 team like like preview of the of the NFL and then like it's like they're like no you got to shorten this like this is like way too long and uh, you know you so you have to, you have to figure out I don't know like sometimes I write some that are like that are pretty long um like you know t uh, over 10 pages so I try to like keep it shorter than that yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta keep that shorter no one's gonna read it gets that. to be you know one wants to read like an essay on like you know like you want to make it interesting for the writer so I mean for the reader so I have to it's like I have to realize I have to kind of think of topics on my own time where it's like you know this is actually interesting so for the March Madness piece that I just started working on actually um like you know before well like a couple hours ago I was like you know I think someone already like talked about you know who could win it and I don't want to like just do like a whole thing on like you know every game or or every you know like I don't want to you know I don't know how to like explain it but I don't want to like be too general and kind of just you know, because like anyone could do that. But I was like, where's like an, an area I could like, you know, make it interesting. So it's like I could do first round upsets or or someone could do like maybe top, you know, top teams like in March Madness. Like you don't want to do like here's who could win and here's who could upset. And like, you know, yeah. here's all the team. You know what I mean? It's like that's kind of what I've learned from the whole writing experience so far. It's kind of how to make it interesting for other people. And I'm fortunate to have an editor. Um who like edits my articles, does a really good job with it. Um, kind of, you know, so I just send it to him and I, I mean, I'm, you know, I try not to make too many like mistakes or anything, but like, you know, he definitely makes it better and, you know, edits it, makes it. That's what editors polished, are for, man. So. That's what editors are for. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's kind of how that's, that's going. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's definitely, it's definitely worth my time as, you know, as someone trying to be in sports, journalism or sports media like you know to to do that even if it's not exactly my main focus but I mean it's still it's still a good experience to have because like no matter what you you know want to do in the industry like you know like we said like you, you should be you know you should be well-rounded you should you should be able to do like a few different things at least so you can have a better chance on making it into the industry um yeah I mean yeah that's pretty much um it's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in terms of, you know, the WRCU and the, the Targum stuff. But, um, you know, um, I mean, I know you're also, you know, you're also a podcast host. Like, you know, you do the, the Who's on Top podcast. And, um, you know, I guess. What, yeah, what, after you listen yeah. to this, go check that out. I've done it with my high school friends for five years. Five years. Yeah, you've been doing it a lot longer than, than I have. I think this is yeah. not even, it's not even a year old. But um, I'm yeah, 175 yeah. episodes in. Hundred. Wow. Yeah, see, um, exactly. But, you know. It's it's fun, right? Like, don't you just enjoy like just doing one? Like, I don't know if you do every week or not, but like, I mean, don't okay. you just enjoy like it gives you an outlet, right? To just and even like the crew sometimes too. Like, it it, it gives you an outlet to talk about sports and just you know I'll what I mean. That, yeah. you, you it's like it's always on your mind, and it kind of just gives you an outlet to to share what you're you're thinking. I mean, I think that's the great part about podcasts, and and obviously other people could see them and. You know, you can get an audience out of it, but I, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, that's kind of how you know, all you know, the stuff's going with WRC and the Targum and the podcast, sports writing. You know, you try to do different things to kind of make it um, in the industry. Um, I guess this is, yeah, I think this is a question that I kind of like to ask people when I do um, the just vibing, especially like like with people in the sports, you know, who are also going to sports journalism. Like, I guess we kind of talked about it, but like, you know, it's a tough feel. Um, but, you know, do you have any tips on like how like how people could make it in the industry, I guess? I would say no, because I'm trying to make it in the industry myself. Right, right, so right. <laughs> yeah, when I, Arnav, when I find a tip, I will let you know first, because... I have not. Enough, so enough. unfortunately, it's not something I'm adept at. I'm working on it though. And when <laughs> have confidence in yourself, I'll say that I have a lot of confidence in myself that I'll succeed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. once, when I do, I'll let you know. But it's I'm not there yet. Right, right, right. Yeah, obviously we're we're still we're still students. Um, we're still trying to figure it out. We're still you know doing, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I think that's why experiences are really key because you know on top of your major, uh, whatever you're majoring, and I feel like based on what I've learned, that's that's really key to do stuff like the radio and, and the target yeah. and writing so, so you can get some hands-on experience so people could see that like employers could see that, that yeah. you, you know, that, you know that stuff, right hmm? this is just vibing podcast is this an offshoot of your other podcast um 
Kind of, yeah. It's like the, the main one's called Sports Vibe. Um, it's it's all under the same podcast, but like, got it. It's just, so like it's just vibing just, is just like the more informal talk. Yeah, and I kind of yeah, and I kind of wanted to start that just to, you know, it, it's fun, it's right? Fun. It's, it's it's fun to talk about like non sports stuff and the personal, like the more personal stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I like it. I was just, I was just curious, like where what you were like what what this was exactly. Gotcha. I, like yeah, no. I agree. It's a good, it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I I thought so too. I thought I you know I really had something with this. Um, I you know I think I do. It's just sometimes it's a little harder to find guests. I kind of had to take a break on that series for a few months, but I'm glad we you know we could resume it today. Um, you know, definitely great talk about you know the so the whole sports stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess if I have to give any tips, you know, like same thing. Um, I haven't made it in the industry. Like I I'm still trying to figure out. It's you know they like I was saying the experience with WRC the Targum like whatever you can get your hands on you whatever you could do to prove you have experience to show your skills um you know be well rounded as I as I mentioned as we both mentioned I think that's all great and of course yeah confidence is key I mean you know you have to have con- you have to believe in yourself because if you don't like no one's gonna believe in you you know if you don't believe in yourself right so I mean I think that's important and you know, like I've heard always say yes, have an open mind. I think that's, that's definitely very important. Take whatever opportunities you can get and try to, you know, work really hard, um, in your craft to practice, um, you know, get those, get those roles really make the most of them when you do and, and have fun. I mean, it's a fun career, you know, like it's, you know, it's, it's a blessing if you could really do what you want for a living and, you know, um, if you can, you know, do something like this for a living, like, uh, and so many people like dream of stuff like that. So, I mean, you, you got to really make the most out of it and enjoy it because, you know, if you enjoy your work, you're going to just want to work harder and be the best you can be. So, I mean, I guess that's, that's that, all the that best. That was my thought right. process. Hmm? That was my thought process too, to be honest, which is why I'm exactly. doing this. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, so we're, we're making the most out of it and we're living, we're living life, um, you know, to the fullest. So that, that's all fun and good. You know, um, I guess the other thing I wanted to talk about while we're, you know, on this episode, um, obviously, you know, March Madness, um, Wagner defeated Howard, um, 71 68 in the first game of the tournament. So that's, that's exciting. We are underway. So they'll play, um, will they play, they'll play one of the one seats, right? Purdue or no? Oh, uh, no, they will. I don't, Actually, I gotta look at the bracket. I don't know which one's. I think UConn. Maybe you um might be. I think UConn got Stetson though. Um, no, UConn got Stetson. Good call. Good call. Oh, it's North Carolina. It's UNC. North Carolina, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, the first game under the belt. Um. First four is today and tomorrow. Um. The next one coming up: Colorado State, Virginia. Um. And then Colorado, Boise State is the other ten seed playing game. Um. Grambling State, Montana State um over there um in the other 16 playing game um yeah i mean it's you know it's been this bubble has been like really interesting right i mean so many teams that we didn't think would be in the first four are in the first four um you know i know like um you, you know you did a whole episode on this and i i you know i watched a bit of that i went i watched um a, a bit more of the sports speak thing so i don't want to like get but i mean i think my I mean, from this whole thing where, you know, I think the Mountain West was un- under-respected. I feel like they could, a lot of teams could have gotten higher seeds. I feel like Virginia shouldn't have been in. I think Indiana State had a good case for being in. Um, Seton Hall as well. The Big East, I think, was really disrespected to only get three teams in. I feel like they definitely had a case for, for more than that. I mean, with Seton Hall, St. John's, Providence. I mean, I think, uh, you know, John, all of them probably, I'm a Maybe fan. not those two. I think Seton Hall probably had the I'm best. I'm a Rutgers fan, but I'll tell you, Seton Hall deserves to be an overview UVA, who sucked. You yeah, you Virginia was like not good this year. They were like really not that great. I mean, very average team. Like you know, it's just I guess they did enough in the conference tournament to make it to the play-in. But I mean, you know, they had some bad losses. Like Virginia Tech like beat them really badly. I mean, this is not like the same Virginia team we're, we're used to. I feel like there's like a kind of a branding thing. Like Michigan State got a nine. I don't really feel like they really deserve that. Um, you know, and FAU got an eight. I feel like that might have been a lot more because of last year than this year. Um, I feel like there was just a lot of things like like that where you're just going off reputation. Like, you know, Dayton got seven. I mean, they didn't really beat anyone that great. So I, I just feel like it was just kind of like a lot of reputation picks. And, you know, I mean, other than that, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I, I, I feel like it was – I mean, they tried their best. Like, as we mentioned, it's a tough job. But, I mean, it was like – um you know i mean i feel like there's just like these things that were just kind of like seemingly seemingly like they got the seating wrong and then 
you know, they left teams out they probably shouldn't have. They put some in. But it, that kind of happens, like, every year. Like, even last year, like, everyone thought, like, Rutgers was going to be in and then they were out, even though they lost to Minnesota and it was bad. But, like, you know what I mean? So the, it, there's always going to be one or two picks like that. But, like, I don't know. I feel like there could have been, like, it was just a little bit messy the way they ended up with that kind of bracket. Um, I mean, I guess that being said, I mean, I think we got some first – so it was a hard round. bracket because it was because there's so many five so many bit bit stealers. Stealers. the last yeah. the last five years there was three bit stealers in total mm-hmm. this year there's five altogether so it's a hard bracket so i feel bad for the committee but i do agree with everything you said they got a lot of it wrong even though it was hard yeah yeah agreed it was it was a tough um you know a tough decision making yeah because the five bit stealers was much like was more i think last year was zero and then most years i think there's three so um yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It was tough. I, I feel like they did get the, you know, the bubble looked really odd to see, like, you know, it was like Virginia and Indiana State were out. And then, I mean, Virginia was in, and then Boise State was on, on and, and Colorado State first four. And I was like, that's not where the cut line was in, like, nearly anyone's bracket. And then NC State got, obviously, they won the ACC. That was remarkable that they won five games in five days to, to get the auto bin. Um, you know, yeah. BNC beat Virginia on a buzzer beater. Or they I think they tied in a buzzer beater, and then they won in overtime. Um, that's what March is all about. I mean, I'll, it's, it's exciting oh, to yeah. see. I mean, yeah. So now, like, they might be a trendy – upset pick um there's a lot of like you know in the first round there's a lot of like upset potential upset picks and maybe not so much 15 16 but if we're looking at 12 13 like you know there's a lot of 11 like the 10 the 10 sevens like there's so many games where you just have an idea of like you know it's like nevada dayton you think that one could be an upset and then even like you know, potentially McNeese State against Gonzaga. But I feel like, I don't know, I looked at McNeese State's schedule. It wasn't great. I, I still feel like, at first I thought maybe, but, like, I, I feel like Gonzaga, I think, can can take them. But it should be a good one. Like, a lot of these 5-12s are always really good. Drake, Washington State, that's another one I'm looking at. NC State, Texas Tech, I feel like the momentum could continue for NC State. Yeah. Um, what are some other ones? Um I think there's like some more, some more uh, New Mexico versus Clemson. I think New Mexico is an outright favorite, and rightfully so. I mean, they won the Mountain West. Um, I agree, it's pretty good. But I mean, like you know, I, I, yeah, I feel like New Mexico's hot. So you only know. consistent player on that team is PJ Hall, and I, Joe Girard's really got to sit down defensively. We'll see if he does that. Right. Um. Yeah. And then I guess another interesting one to me is um. Uh, Northwestern FAU because I, f- I feel like FAU got overseeded a little bit and I feel like both teams didn't really end up playing that great on their way to the tournament. Um, Northwestern I feel like was a bit more consistent overall I think this year other than the Chicago State loss. I think FAU had some bad losses and then even in the <coughs> excuse me um the you know American tournament you know lost to Temple but I mean at the same time, they were the team who made a run to the Final Four last year, and they have yeah. a lot of same players. So it's like that one could really go either way. I think that's as close as you can get to a toss up in the first round. Um, I'm looking at Northwestern to potentially upset them, but I I don't know. I mean, it could go either way. I mean, that, I guess that's the thing about eight nines is that they can go either way. Texas A and M, Nebraska. I think that's going to be a very exciting one to um, see um, both of the. I, well, A and M I think made it last year, but Nebraska first time in a long time. I mean, they were really good at home this year. Not so great on the road, but I mean, I think they made it work. Um, I mean, you know, Oregon, South Carolina. I think that's another team South Carolina hadn't made in a while. Um, Oregon, you know, the, um, winning the Pac-12 um, over Colorado. So I mean, that was that was interesting. I, I don't think you really think of South Carolina and Oregon as like basketball powers, like the way you think of like. Arizona or even like UCLA or like in the SEC it's like Kentucky, you know what I mean? But um, I think those are some of the first, the more interesting games in the first round. Um, upset potential there. And then, of course, it's, it's always interesting when you, you have like teams like Vermont and then Colgate, you know, like I feel like they make it every year, but they don't really like make a run. But, oh, James Madison, that's another one against Wisconsin. I feel like that could definitely be potential upset although wisconsin played really good in the big 10 tournament they started finding their mojo and they lost in the championship but jmu i think they, they were like 30 and 3 they beat michigan state i feel like everything could be right for an upset there and then i think some people are even saying potentially beating duke in the second round i don't know if i'll go that far but i feel like they could probably at least get one upset um especially for a wisconsin team it's like you really don't know like if they're like the same team they were in the beginning or not and it's, it's you know what i mean like it's, hard, so. it's so much wear and tear from playing on sunday but 
That too. But they've yeah. got five scores in the field, so that always makes them dangerous. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's true. It's like that's a team that can make a deep run, or they can they can lose. But I mean, you know, Jamie's very good. All these mid-major teams who won their conferences are obviously very good for a reason. But um, against the big, you know, the big teams, it's chances are they, you know, they might not exactly match up um just the best. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much. As far as I, I got well, there, well. the first I mean, round. You said a lot of the upsets. I totally agree with Max. I think Nevada is a sneaker to get out. If you want a hot, hot take that you didn't say, because you said a lot of them, I think mm-hmm. Nevada is a sneak peek. Sneak peek, that doesn't make any sense. Nevada is a sneaky team to sneak get peak. out of the West. I think they could I think they could be okay. UNC and make it to the West, the 10 seed. So look out for that. But other than that, uh, that's all I had. I really like this Creighton team, the way they match up with a lot of the programs yeah. they're in, in the Midwest. But overall, that's what I got. Right. Um, yeah, and I guess looking for um, looking forward a little bit to the region, like to the, the Final Four, I guess. Like, what are your – who's your picks to come out of, like, each region? Um, I Houston, UConn for sure. Creighton. Right. And if my hot take's not Nevada, it's either Baylor or UNC. So I don't, the West is the hardest because it's so many bad teams, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening to, like, what you guys were saying about the different regions. I mean, yeah, I feel like UConn's region, the East, is definitely the hardest. There's so many championships. Yeah, but UConn is so good. I don't think it matters. It probably won't. They're, they're, yeah. It's just like, yeah. But, they, I mean, they got Iowa State. They got Illinois, Auburn, all conference tournament winners in their in their region. But, yeah, UConn is really good. I mean, they have a starting five like no other. They can all score. They got, you know, Spencer, and they got, you know, Caravan, and they got Klingon, and then – um. I think Newton, um, some you know, another star. Um, I forgetting their their fifth player, but they have two. Um, I think two freshman stars, and then the other three I just mentioned. Um, yeah, Spencer, yeah, Spencer Caravan, Klingon. So I mean, they're really good. A repeat doesn't really happen like all too much in college basketball. I mean, this year it could it could potentially happen. I just I don't know for some reason I feel like they get they get tripped up somewhere, but actually, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, cause I, I think I had them in my bracket too. It's just lot, like, it, it makes sense that they would go all the way, but at the same time, I just, it's March, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just like, does that really ever, I mean, I, I guess it happened a while ago, right? Like Florida, I think it's the last team to do it. It happens um, occasionally. It happens. It, it could, if they're that good, I guess. And, and they are that good. So yeah. Um, I forgot who I, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I took all the one seats. So I think I did have like UConn, UNC, and then, um, forgot uh, who else I, you know, I had in the, um, I don't know. I feel like Purdue might get tripped up. I, I, I don't think it's going to be all four one seeds. I feel like at least one of them will get tripped up somewhere. Um, yeah, it's kind of fun to mix and match. A lot of two and three seeds. Um, you know, you got Kentucky, you got Creighton, you got teams like that. Uh, I yeah. guess before like the whole Rutgers thing, I used to like, I don't know, for some reason I ended I, 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 I used to like Duke when I was like younger because I, I guess like the players. As long as you don't do up. now. What? That's okay. As long as you don't like them now. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Cause they're going to be R- Rutgers rivals next year with um, all the talent coming into our program. So hopefully we yeah. play them in like the non-conference. I hope we play like some tournaments, something like I think really we will. Exciting. I think we'll do get a Vegas tournament. Man, that would be so fun. Like, yeah, but I guess basically it's because, you know, the Duke thing, because a lot of their players made the NBA. Plus, I think I saw them doing the the Cameron Crazies, like their their pep rally. And, like, I, didn't really, I wasn't really a much of a college sports fan or a bas- college basketball fan. But I saw that, and I was like, they did, like, the Every Time You Touch song, and they kind of, like, were, like, you know, in slow motion. Then as soon as the song sped up, like, they started high-fiving the fans and going crazy. And I don't know, when you're a little kid or – you know, like you, you kind of like teams for silly reasons like that. So I guess, and I was like, oh yeah, plus they're pretty good. But you know, a lot of early exits in March. So I mean, um, but they had the final four run against UNC um, a couple of years ago. That was that was a cool one with um, then Coach K's like final ride. So um, yeah, I mean that's about you know um, and Zion Williams and throwing down dunks. I mean you know Grayson Allen. Those are just a few of the players like I I kind of knew from that time. But but yeah, no Duke's a fun team. So sometimes like in my brackets, I'll just mess around and I'll just pick teams i like more because you know you never know right i mean and they're not like bad by any means but you know so but yeah i mean i'll probably say uconn like unc um maybe houston i would say iowa state i think it's uh you know definitely a, a pick to look out for i feel like they could make a deep run as well um but in the regions i'd probably go 
I don't know. I feel like Purdue might get tripped up. They might not, but I, I, I'm, I'd probably say at least UConn, Houston, UNC, and then maybe Purdue might get out. But I feel like maybe, maybe a two seed or three seed comes in. Like, like you said, Creighton could definitely do something. Um, you know, Baylor could, Marquette. You know, all, all teams definitely to look out for. Um, yeah, of course. Those are the top yeah. Seeds, though. Yeah, exactly. Out of all the top seeds, and then even like. You know, I'll I'll seeing like I mean I think Alex said Iowa State has like you know could beat UConn the lead eight. I mean I think that could potentially happen if like they play elite defense, which they they held Houston to forty one, and if they put their their shots fall, I feel like that could be like one of the few teams to beat UConn just because like they've been playing so good lately. Like it, that could catch on in March, and you know, I, but that's gonna be I agree, I agree, I agree. That game. Hopefully we get the game in the lead eight so we could see it for ourselves, but. Other than that, if that doesn't happen, I would I would assume UConn would would win it. I mean, I think they have the best championship experience. They have the best players. You know, it's just sometimes in, in March that doesn't always pan out. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you never really know. But um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, we're probably good. The funny thing is, there's probably going to be like an upset no one saw coming in in two days, and then we'll everyone's bracket will be busted um we might have another 15 or 16 seed um um you know uh, i don't know I, I don't really feel like it this year because I, I feel like those seeds aren't that good but i mean st peter's is back in the dance against yeah we're um, not gonna win this time of yeah no tennessee is a very good team um you know I, um i think samford has a really a, a good chance against kansas which i you know because kansas has two injured starters and that's something i didn't really think about but i mean that that could happen that would be kind of shocking kansas won the, the national championship i think a couple years a couple years ago um you know another blue blood team but i mean just because you're blue blood doesn't mean you can't lose in march right like i mean that could potentially happen i mean sanford's a pretty good team i guess i would say i'm not really you know the most familiar well, I, think, I think sanford will win i think sanford will win because they just announced kevin mcculler who's right. kansas's best bucket getter out for the entire march madness which wow. sucks for him because his college career is now over. But Kansas, they don't have a bucket getter now that can ISO on his own. So I'm a little worried. I think Stanford might win. Yeah, and that could be a big upset, maybe even one of the biggest. I mean, that would be a 13 over a 4. Um, I don't know. Do you think McNeese State could beat Gonzaga? I've heard a lot of people say that. I thought they might, but now I look into it deeper and I'm like, I don't I think do, so. I do think they can definitely win. I think it's one of the 50-50 games because Shahada Wells, I think, is the best player on the court. But the issue is – is that the issue is, is that Gonzaga's Mark Few is still so good at that stuff. So I don't know. He's so good at coaching, That's man. Fair, so, yeah. Yeah. A Gonzaga, another team. I don't know. Cause I, I kind of, another team I kind of used to like, cause you know, they're like a mid, I mean, I still do like them cause they're kind of like a mid major, but also not. And they made deep runs and, basketball really put them on a, on the map like before about you know like i never even knew what you yeah. know who Gonzaga was and i was like or what college that was like what you know they're where they were their majors or like what they're you know like i never knew anything about gonzaga and then now yeah. it's like they're in the tournament every year and it's like and not only you know like colgate vermont i also think about but like because they're in the tournament every year but Gonzaga's good like they make runs they make deep runs like hopefully it works out one year for them and they almost won they they lost to uh, i think baylor in the championship after going undefeated so they've had some good players over the year like you know like timmy and like all those guys but i mean yeah no definitely a power i mean st mary's and in the in, uh, kind of like you know become a good competitor of theirs in the wcc as well um beat them in the in the championship game both five I see, which I thought was interesting. Conference same C line, but I, I guess that, that could work out. I mean, they're they're going to be in different regions, I think. Anyway, so like, I mean, well, yeah. So I mean, I think that's, I guess that's okay. I mean, it feels kind of strange, but I don't think it's the worst worst thing the committee did by any means. So I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess similar teams. I mean, you know, um, St. Mary's won twice, on Gonzaga won once. Um, yeah, uh, March Madness, like that. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, I guess you know before we. I guess move on. Um, you know, these final four games, I think Colorado State, I mean, first four games, Colorado State, Virginia, and um, Colorado Boise State. Um, I think Colorado State, Virginia is about to tip off or didn't already. And then um, Colorado Boise. Uh, do you have, like, do you have picks on who you think is going to make it out in, into the main draw? I do, of course. I do. Um, so Co Boise State's going to win because they shouldn't even be in the final four. The fact that they're in the final four is stupid. I'll say that right now. They're going to beat Colorado, who's very talented but can never put it together. It, it's much harder. The 10 seed is much harder. Yeah. Uh, actually, wait, no. I, 
I got my games mixed up. Colorado State's going to kill Virginia, and Boise State is going to kill Colorado. I think it's actually really easy. I forgot like Virginia. Mountain West. Mountain West thing. I forgot um, Virginia, which is a fraud team, is in. They're going to prove themselves. Yeah, right. yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good league, and they got they got the six teams in. I just did feel like they're underseeded. Yeah, and I feel like both of them uh, – yeah, I think both of them will win too. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, March Madness, a lot of fun. I can't wait to watch that. The first four, four days of March Madness are truly some of the best sports days of the year because you got all these games and all these different channels and, you know, just upsets and the brackets. It's, it's like, it's almost like three different tournaments in one. You got that and then you got the, the better, you know, the Sweet 16 Elite Eight is kind of a different vibe, yeah. you know, uh, like better matchups, higher quality. And then the final four, you know like kind of where it, where it all ends i guess but it's like and then like because they're separated by weeks it's kind of like oh yeah we're back to this again like you know what i mean but it's like it's different now like it kind of has like the interesting vibe to it where you almost get three different basketball experiences and three different weekends but the first weekend oh my goodness like that is just like it's like wow like you know what i mean like i'm not even the biggest college basketball fan but that weekend is just is insane especially with all the upsets and you know, it's just a wonderful time of the year. I mean, you know, so I'm really excited to be watching that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I got for you know March Madness. I think we kind of highlighted all the all the. Yeah, main yeah, things. you did a good job running through it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um. I guess other than that, kind of did want to talk about you know some some NBA um like playoff previews. I know it's still kind of a little early, but I feel like we kind of got the you know the main thing. I'm. I mean. We kind of have an idea of who the main top teams are going to be, but um, you know, um, in the East, obviously you got the Celtics on, on on a tear. Um, you know, another sixteen winning streak. The Bucks, I think the Cavs and Knicks are going to be players. Um, even like the Magic to an extent. Um, but I feel like the, the top four are really going to be really big in the East, and then. Fortunately, my nets are like not doing great, but that's that is what it is, I guess. And then <laughs> the Knicks are doing um pretty good. And the West, you kind of got the Thunder, the Wolves, Nuggets, Clippers. It's an interesting West because you got the Mavs through the Warriors. That plane could be explosive. Mavs, Suns, yeah, yeah. Like Warriors, um, gonna be an all timer. Um, but I mean, I don't know. In the West, it's kind of like you know, I'm looking at Denver. I'm looking at the Clippers um, with all their star power with Harden. You know, everyone healthy. The, the Clippers team. always get injured, dude. Like, That's true. But the, this year they're not, though. Fragile. I think it's still the Nuggets by far. Maybe the I Wolves so. the Nuggets. The Nuggets. Because, they, yeah, I mean, they have that championship experience. They have Jokic, Murray, they have all these guys on the bench who can step up for them. Like, you know, we saw Christian Brown and, you know, Bruce Brown who left. But, I mean, so many guys like that, um, MBJ, who can contribute – Jamal Murray, Nicole Jokic, deadly duo. Um, you know, and they have championship pedigree now. I feel like that's that's probably gonna run. They're probably gonna get out of the West again. I feel like as good as the Thunder and T Wolves have been in the regular season, I feel like the Magic falls away in the playoffs when experience takes over. I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, not to say they can't make runs. But I feel like the Nuggets will probably get out of the West in the East. Celtics. I think Celtics all the way on in the East. I mean. You know, I don't think anyone could beat them. I mean, I don't think the Bucks have really played up to that level for most of the season. Um, especially yeah. Doc Rivers, it's like hard to trust that they they can. Um, but he they has have... improved. He's actually I gotta give him. I hate Doc Rivers. I don't think he's a good coach, but he has improved that team. So I gotta give him credit. They That's start true. running more pick and roll. They've yeah, they've been a lot better sports. lately. Yeah, so I gotta give Doc credit, even though I'm not a fan of his. That's fair, yeah. Um, different team, Dame, Giannis could be explosive. I, I kind of hope they do get into the Eastern Conference Finals, at least with the Celtics. I'll have to see that. Um, the Cavs have been playing really well lately, with like even without Donovan Mitchell. Um, <coughs> you know, kind of their, their climb up to where they are in the standings. Um, I guess another team I wanted to talk about was, you know, I know you're a Knicks fan, but uh, the Knicks have been on fire this year. I mean, they've been really good. Um, fourth in the East, they've kind of been holding serve there for quite a while. But, I mean... How far do you think the Knicks can go um, in the playoffs? Because I, I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a fun Knicks team. There's a lot going right for them. They, they've had some injuries, but, you know, they've been pretty good. And, I, you know, I think they – I don't know. I don't think they could beat the Celtics. I think if they if thing, if everything goes right, they could probably beat anyone else in the East. Um, maybe Yeah, I mean, probably even the Bucks and the Cavs if everything breaks right. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd say I can't rule – I, I could probably say with confidence they won't beat Boston stuff, and I don't think anyone in the East can. But I think they could probably beat everyone else if things go right. But they could also potentially. I agree. Beat. If they're fully healthy, if OG can get over his injury problems and so is Julius Randle, I think they could get take the Bucks to seven, maybe win. 
But yeah, not, it's kind of moot point because they're not being Boston. They're not being Boston. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't think that's the thing with the Bucks, the Cavs. I feel like they could potentially be the but you know, depending on how things go. But yeah, I guess with yeah, they're not being Boston. So I guess you know, yeah. I mean, do you think this? I, I feel like the only team who could beat the Celtics is the Nuggets potentially. But I don't know. I feel like the Celtics are just that good this year, and I don't see like I don't see the Heat like doing the same thing like as they did last year. I don't feel like they're quite that good, but you can never really count them out, but I feel like the Nuggets are the only team who could really potentially beat them, like, in an NBA seven-game series. Obviously, anyone could probably win on any night, but, like, in a seven-game series, I feel like, you know, um, the Nuggets are probably the only team who could beat the Celtics. Do you agree with that, or do you think, you know, anyone else could beat them, or nobody the else? Clippers have the wing depth to beat them, but, again, that, that assumes they're healthy, which I don't think they will be. Interesting, yeah. I mean, the regular, so far they have been, I think, in the regular season, which is, but, you know, yeah, you never know, like, with them. I mean, they, they might not be. Yeah, I, I agree. So probably only the Nuggets could potentially beat them. Um, Yeah, I mean, I guess another thing I wanted to get to, you know, um, I guess as a Giants fan, like, you know, how do you feel about, like, Saquon Barkley, you know, join, joining the Eagles? I, at this point, I'm so desensitized to the NFL, man. He could have handled it better, but it's also a business. So I, it I agree. I agree with this point. And, I mean, I talked about this on a previous episode um, or the last episode where he did NFL free agency, and it is a business. And he has a better situation there. He's better. He, you know, the Giants weren't willing to pay him more money this time around. I mean, they obviously they tried their best. But, I mean, you know, he has a better line there. He has, you know, he's from there. I mean, he has the, – on the field, it could work out better. And, and off the field, he's getting $26 million guaranteed, and that's really important you know, with his injury history and all that stuff. So I think it's a good situation. And yeah, I mean, it's a business at the end of the day. It sucks. But, you know, that he went to the Eagles or playing them twice a year now. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's a business. Uh, I think Singletary, I think, isn't bad. I mean, I think Saquon was, you know, he, he's he's great. But like, I feel like he's not re- irreplaceable as we, we, we try to think he is because we, we love him as Giants fans and, you know, the highlights, but you know, he's a running back. I mean, you know, like Singletary well, can provide almost as NFL, much value. In the NFL, I don't get that like attached to players anymore. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to, cause you know, like same thing happened with like OBJ. Right. And then like, he kind of, he left too. And like, that was another fan favorite. So it's kind of like, but yeah, I mean, I don't think he's irreplaceable. I mean, I feel like, you know, he, he could like Singletary was the second back for Houston and he almost had as much production as, as Barkley did in, in, in the last year. So Saquon, as much as we love him, I feel like, you know, he's not irreplaceable there. He, you know, like I, other backs can provide as, you know, maybe not as much, value but almost you know for a lot less cost and i I think we have to realize that as fans and it's hard but wish him all the best though i mean he was he was a great player a great person off the field i mean you know like it it sucks obviously but it it sucks because it's going to leave a giant hole in the giants offense (laughs) that's actually the much bigger problem than him joining the eagles is that you know they really have to figure out and they've done a decent job with free agency so far but they really got to get that quarterback o-line and receiver situation figured out because if they don't like, you know, Saquon's not going to be there to save them when the offense is failing miserably. And the defense can be as great as it could be with Burns now joining Kayvon and Dexter. But, I mean, without without a good offense, like, it's just going to it's gonna be a nightmare. So that's the big problem with Saquon leaving more than him joining the rival Philadelphia Eagles, who we, you know, we all love and hate and love to hate or whatever. But, like, but, yeah, I mean, I think the Giants will eventually be fine. I mean, it's it's a business move, you know, and I think they, they got their – they got a back who, who, who can provide some value. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of how I feel about that. I'm, I'm glad I got to have a laugh about CJ Gardner Johnson joining the Eagles. That was pretty funny, and I was like, Yeah, after all the suffering with Saquon, I was like, See, at least now I could have fun with it because I, I thought the whole situation was like with the Philly fans and then him coming back. I thought that, that was like, you know, that was something that kind of lightened the yeah. mood for me a bit with that whole thing, but all right, I'm yeah. Out. I'm gonna yeah. cut you off. I gotta go soon, dude. Okay. All right. That yeah. No, no problem. I guess um yeah. Final thing um, you know WRC Targum game um scheduled for next Thursday um I remember the uh, Targum they got the win. I'm gonna yeah. end with this or not? Yeah, that's a little preview for this I year. Thought. The Targum is gonna blow. Can I curse here? Sure. Why not? Yeah, you can go ahead. The fuck out of WRC. <laughs> it's gonna be a bloodbath. But you guys are all my friends, so I'll still love you at the end. It'll be a good time. And I'm really excited for it. I'll tune in on Thursday or show out. Uh, and I don't know. Thank you for having me on this podcast, talking about life, talking about sports. It was a good time, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. 
Always, yeah. It, it was really fun. Yeah. Th thanks for coming on. I'm excited for the RSC target game. As long as oh, yeah. I don't attempt to half court, I'll be happy with whatever happens. Um, hopefully, RSC wins, but we'll see. Um, should be a good time. But yeah, with that being said, um, you know, this has been another episode of Just Vibing. Um, hopefully, you can find another guest to have the series continue um, in the next month or so. In the meantime, sports coverage will resume again next week um, with our. Um, Myself and Jitesh will talk about March Madness. We'll talk about all the stuff going on in the sports world, um, you know, normal episode next week. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, be sure to check out, you know, the Who's on Top podcast, Sports Speak, some other great podcasts, you know, um, uh, um, by my friends here. Obviously, you know, you run the, the um, Who's yeah, on Top. Right. Um, yeah, and then... Um, you know, um, sports speak. That's another great one by Eddie. But um, you know, in, in the meantime, you know, I'm I'm gonna be signing off here for Ellis Gordon as always. Um, you know, stay um, stay tuned for future episodes, and we will see you next week.